Hi, thanks for joining me. I'm Dr. Lana Marconi, and my guest today is naturopathic doctor Jennifer Lococo. Now, naturopathic medicine uses a variety of therapeutic techniques to help their patient, and I'm going to ask Jennifer about a few of those, so hopefully they can help you depending on your state of health or ill health. Jennifer, detox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, detoxification is a big topic in today's society. Everybody has heard of the term or has seen products sold in the store, but I think that people don't really understand exactly what a detox entails or how a detox would work. So that's why I would always advise seeking out help from your alternative healthcare professional and getting guidance from them to approach detox. Um, and the reason why I say that is because detoxification can actually be dangerous if you buy some product from a health food store or from um, a grocery store that says it's doing some type of liver detoxification. Um, it can actually do the opposite, it can actually be more dangerous than effective in your health. So we have to be really careful about what products we're using for detox and therefore, again, it is a medicine so we should always consult an alternative health care practitioner to guide us and make sure we're making the right decisions. So that's a good point. So before you go to a, a health store, you should consult with your doctor or the person who's working at the health store? Um, sometimes the people who work at the health store do have knowledge, um, but if they don't have a degree in something um, specifically, if they're not a nutritionist or if they're not a naturopathic doctor, um, then I would definitely advise a naturopathic doctor, someone who has the background in how the body works and the functions and the anatomy and the physiological um, aspects, and as well um, knows the herbs and all of the detoxification um, nutraceuticals that are necessary for that detox to be effective. Because sometimes if you have, for example, a pre-existing liver condition or a pre-existing kidney condition that you might not be aware of, and now you take this product at, per advice from a friend or family member or someone who works at the healthcare store, health food store, um, it could actually be very detrimental to your health. So, okay, why should a person do a detox in the first place? Because, and I ask this, because the body naturally has its own detox process every day. For example, sweating, we're detoxing. So why should a person do a detox above and beyond our natural ability to detox every day? Okay, so basically um, to do a detoxification, the reason why we should is because we're actually just supporting what the natural um, processes of the body are. So for example, even if we think about the liver, the liver has all these vitamins, antioxidants, and minerals that are necessary for detoxification to happen. Happen. So in today's society, we're not always eating as clean as we should be. We're not always exercising as much as we should be. The air we're breathing, the water we're drinking, we can try to live as clean as possible, but we're bombarded with all these different chemicals and pollutants in our environment all the time, and it just puts extra burden on the liver. And if we're taking pharmaceutical drugs, that's putting even more um, um, more work on the liver to detoxify. So we need to make sure that that liver has everything it needs to work properly. So do you do tests to measure, let's say, liver deficiency, and then you would prescribe a certain detox based on what you would find in the organs? Absolutely, absolutely. So we would want to be testing um, your liver function. That's huge. We need to see what is your current liver function, because if you have um, impaired liver function, then we need to address that before we can do a detoxification. Um, we need to do testing for your kidney function. How well is your kidney excreting um, all of the minerals in the body? And then we need to also look at things like heart function and inflammation. So we need to assess a whole body picture before we can say is detoxification right for you what type of detoxification is right for you and are you a candidate and if so do your detoxification process is probably going to differ from the next person's and how long is a, a normal detox process Okay, another great question. So when we talk about detox, again, it's not a standard for one person. So it's different all across the board. For, so for example, one type of detoxification that we would use is called the chelation process. So once we've assessed your blood work, then I would say, okay, do, you, do we think you actually have heavy metal toxicity? So if you have heavy metal toxicity, we need to run a whole other um, slew of tests and then determine if you do in fact have heavy metal toxicity. And if you do, then that's a whole treatment in itself. So that's a round of 10 10 IVs, for example, along with oral supplementation. But if you don't have heavy metal toxicity, but you have just impaired liver function, that's maybe some oral supplements, maybe a few different types of IVs. So everyone's different. Like That's why I really, really just want to um, um, go over and over that point and really bring that point home that every it's individualized care. So maybe you need one treatment, the next person needs 100, right? So it's very individualistic. 
So you mentioned IVs. Let's talk about intravenous vitamin mm -hmm. therapy. How does that work? So intravenous vitamin therapy, all IVs are compounded by the naturopathic doctor specifically for the patient's complaints. So we could do an IV for detox. We could do an IV for chelation. We could do an IV for energy. We could do an IV for hormonal imbalance. It just depends what we're putting in the IV bag. So that's really the fun or the art aspect of being a naturopathic doctor because we're just kind of taking everything case by case and customizing your treatment to your body. So when we talk about IV treatments and vitamin C, is it, I mean, what's the recommend dosage? Is it 25 mg's? Is it 100,000 mg's? I mean, how high do you go yeah. with these vitamins? So for vitamin C therapy, we use a lot of vitamin C with um, cancer patients. That's where it's really popular. But the dosage is all different. So for example, if we were going to do an energy um, IV, you might have 10 grams, so 10,000 milligrams of vitamin C in your IV. If we were using it for cancer, we might have to go up to 100,000 milligrams, so 100 grams of vitamin C. So again, it just depends on what um, issue you are going to receive the intravenous vitamin therapy for, and then that determines the dosage of the ingredients. And what's the theory behind it? I mean, does the, vit does the vitamin C kill the cancer cells and protect the healthy cells, or how does that work? That's exactly it. So vitamin C at a low dose, so anything under 25 grams, is going to just be a powerful antioxidant. And then as soon as we go 25 grams and above, now it's a pro-oxidant. So pro-oxidant meaning it's going to be able to see which cells are not um, functioning properly in the body, i.e. a cancer cell, and it will attack that cell, but maintain the health of the good cells. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're a big fan of using intravenous vitamin therapy because, again, it has the ability to protect the good cells and target the bad cells. And it's not just with cancer, it's even for viral infections. So sometimes we have people come in and they have bronchitis, and their bronchitis is cured after one um, after one IV treatment again. Wow, after one? Yes, but again, it's all it's all um, individualistically sure. based. So I've had one patient. We just did one, and she was she didn't she had her antibiotic prescription, but she didn't need to fulfill it because she we were able to kill it with the IV. Yeah. So okay, antibiotics. Let's talk about the flu shot. Oh, wow. um, do you have a natural remedy for the flu shot? <gasps> Yes, just make sure your immune system is working well. <laughs> That's why I think the alternative medicine is so important and that we need to go in for regular routine screening just to make sure our immune system is functioning well. It's okay if we get sick. It's not a bad thing for us to get sick, but if it's the length of the cold is um, compromising our ability to function and cope, then okay, we need to support our immune system. We don't, being, never having a cold is not necessarily a good thing either for our immune system. So it's okay to get a cold, but it's the length and time and the severity so how can we prevent that is just maintaining a good immune system and to maintain a good immune system we need to be guided by our alternative healthcare practitioners to tell us how to do that um, where does mistletoe injections come in Okay, so mistletoe injections are a great therapy used in mainly in cancer therapy, and this was developed in Germany. So Germany, they actually have the black forest, and the black forest, that's where a lot of mistletoe grows. And they've learned that when they inject the mistletoe subcutaneously, that it actually stimulates an immune system response. So if we took mistletoe orally, it would be toxic to the body, but when we inject it subcutaneously, it actually tells the immune system to start um, gearing up and get ready to fight something. So in Germany, it's actually part of their healthcare model to include mistletoe injections for any patient that's going through chemotherapy or radiation. And I think that we need to bring that information to Canada and to the uh, North America because that's something that's utilized every day in Germany. And it's sad that we don't use integrate that practice more here. Mm -hmm. And how can people find you? What's your website? Um, www.lacocowellnessclinic.ca. Thank you, Dr. Jennifer Lococo, for visiting us. Um, you can actually hear more from Dr. Jennifer on um, the Wellness Story documentary film that I produced. And you can check out more interviews with experts in the health field on my website, drlana.com. Thanks for joining us.